So originally I was kind of hesitating on uh, talking about the World Boxing Super Series Part 2, um, specifically the, the Part 2 that uh, coincides with the Bantamweight division, uh, but considering the fact that they um, they released a, a couple of press releases the last couple of days, there's been a bunch of news stories on the World Boxing Super Series and the fact that there's going to be three different divisions, one of them's going to be... Um, 118 pound division, one's going to be the 140 pound division, and then the third division hasn't yet been announced yet. Um, uh, you know, I'm hoping that third division is going to be, I don't know, maybe 154 or something, or who knows, maybe maybe it'll be like 126 or, or 130. Uh, I think that, you know, there's there, there's definitely some some uh, some guys out there that I think are, are deserving of the spotlight at, at some of those weight classes where they may not necessarily otherwise get it. Um, but as far as the Bantamweight uh, tournament goes, um, I figured I'd just uh, talk about the people that are already included in it, um, who isn't yet included in it, who might be included in it, and uh, pretty much the, 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 whole, the whole thing from uh, top to bottom. So they do already have confirmed um, the IBF and former, or actually now, ex excuse me, the, the former IBF and current uh, WBA Super Bantamweight Champion um, Ryan Burnett. They do have confirmed the WBO Bantamweight Champion, Zelani Tete. And they do have confirmed the now new uh, current IBF Champion, um, Emmanuel Rodriguez, uh, after he just won this past weekend. It's pr pretty impressive, the fact that they managed to get him to sign on pretty much immediately after that. But I guess um, they already they, it's likely that they already had their eyes on him and uh, figured that they just approached him, uh, you know, maybe even before the fight, but definitely, uh, definitely afterwards, considering how... Um, how well he performed against uh, Paul Butler, former champion. Um, now Inoue is slated to be in there, and he has agreed that he will be a part of the tournament so long as he wins on May 25th, coming up here against Jamie McDonald. Um, but there is the occasion that, you know, if Jamie McDonald is able to pull the upset, it's kind of weird saying that, like, if Jamie McDonald is able to pull the upset, considering he's the bigger guy and he's the defending champion going into it. Um, but, you know, those things happen sometimes in boxing. Uh, but, you know, I'd, I'd imagine if uh, McDonald does pull off the upset over Inoue, he would probably be the uh, the fourth um, addition to the tournament. Um, somebody who's not going to be in the tournament, um, incidentally, and, and actually, sadly, because I, um, I was actually interested to see if, uh, he, would, if he would join it, was uh, Guillermo Rigondeaux. So, um, it looks like they offered him a spot in the, the World Boxing Super Series, and supposedly, according to a Boxing Scene article... Um, Guillermo was uh, speaking with, I guess, um, his uh, his personal doctor, and uh, they were basically talking about the feel, feeling like it would be too much of a risk and uh, I guess too much of um, to, like, too much of a potential health issue and like maybe the the fact that uh, making tr trying to drop down to 118, especially after having gone up to 130 and competing his entire professional career at 122, that it might be um, uh, too too um, too stringent for um, for him to be able to make it and be able to be healthy and uh, you know and potentially stunt his chances at winning and um, you know it's it's unfortunate because there were, I remember uh, before there was a there was a lot of talk from from him and whoever wins his Twitter and his camp about oh like well he could just make 118 and you know the 118 guys I, I guess the 118 guys were ducking him even though he never fought at 118 but they were ducking him too but um, Apparently he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to join the uh, World Boxing Super Series, which, I like I said, is unfortunate because I would have actually liked to have seen um, what it for one what he has left after the Lomachenko loss, and uh, not even necessarily holding that loss against him um, to uh, to a one hundred percent degree, simply because of the fact that Lomachenko was a he was a naturally bigger guy, and uh, Rigo did go up and wait to fight the guy. Doesn't just because you lose to uh, a guy that's bigger than you doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to lose to all the guys that are the same size or, or smaller than you. You know, it's just, it, that should be common sense, but I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's not that common. But um, unfortunately, Rigo won't be a part of the tournament, um, so I'm not sure what he, where he goes from there. But, uh, so we, we have uh, potentially four guys in there already. Um, just kind of looking at the, the rest of the field, I do know that the WBC title, of course, is vacant um, since Luis Neri um, was any was was stripped on the scale for not making it against uh, Shinsuke Yamanaka in their rematch. Yamanaka has of course retired. Um, well, I mean, who knows? Maybe maybe he would come out of retirement for for the for the tournament. Try to maybe um, end things off for the, on a better note than he did against Neri. 
but I mean, even just the way that it ended with Neri, I guess uh, there you could take some solace, or he could take some solace in the fact that um, it took a guy that was, you know, on drugs the first time and overweight the second time to finally dethrone him and actually give him a blemish on his record, or two blemishes, as it were. Um, but beyond that, uh, the WBC championship should theoretically be held between the top two contenders, the, that being Nordin Ubali of uh, France and um, what's the guy's name? Uh, I can't think of the guy's the, the first part of his name. Um, something Sor Chitapana. Um, I think it was Pech Sor Chitapana of, uh, of uh, Thailand. So uh, those two should be competing for the WBC title. I'm not sure if the WBSS will wait and see if the winner of that um, if that fight gets ordered within a, a timely manner and uh, have the winner of that fight be a part of the tournament or maybe potentially even have that fight be a part of the tournament unto itself, like just have that matchup already pre-made and then the other fighters can kind of choose their opponents, not unlike what happened with uh, the first two tournaments with super middleweight and with cruiserweight where the top four seeds was able to choose their opponents from the bottom four seeds. Um, with regards to the, how uh, the WBSS in particular seeded the fighters. Um, but aside from them, um, just some names that I'd be kind of interested in seeing on there. Um, w former WBA super champion Juan Carlos Payano, I think would be an excellent addition. Uh, Dominican fighter, um, guy that's um, appeared on PBC a number of times. Um, two of his fights against uh, Rashid Warren, who is actually another guy that I'll mention in a second. Um, was on was on PVC. Two controversial fights. Could, both fights could that, that could have gone either way. Of course, Warren um, won the second fight of those two. So he then dethroned him as the WBA super champion. He was subsequently then dethroned by Zanet, uh, Zakianov, who was then eventually beat by Ryan Burnett. So there's the lineage there. Uh, but Warren and Payano still loom as you know very much top contenders. Still very much um, top fighters at the weight class. You know, they, I don't think that either has lost a step since. Um, they've been dethroned. As a matter of fact, I think Piano's gotten a little bit better. And I think maybe Warren has too, um, considering uh, he managed to get a pretty uh, comprehensive uh, decision victory over McJoe Arroyo, former, um, former super flyweight champion, um, when he decided to drop down. I I'd very well imagine that he could very easily jump right back up to 118, especially considering he actually just got a win, I think it was a week or two ago, at 118 pounds. I think it was in an 8 or a 10 rounder though. Um, basically just a stay busy fight for Warren. Um, while he was either waiting on uh, the potential um, IBF mandated fight that he could theoretically be in line for um, after Jer after uh, Jonas Sultan Jaron Akas. However, Akas I guess has a, has already like a pre made deal where if he beats Sultan and if Kali Afai beats David Carmona on a card that they're sharing with uh, those two um, main events, they're gonna wind up fighting each other. So that would unfortunately put Warren a bit on the bench. Um, for the time being. So if he was to just jump in here into the World Boxing Super Series, I mean, um, the money, the clout, the critical acclaim, I mean, it's all pretty much there for him to, to earn um, should he so choose uh, to, to pursue it. So, I mean, I could very well see somebody like a Payano, somebody like a Warren um, being, an, being added to, um, to the talent pool. Um, some other names uh, that, that I, I'd imagine could potentially get in there. Um, Liborio Solis, you know, Liborio Solis, who a lot of people felt like... Um, defeated uh, Jimmy McDonald in their first fight. I felt like he defeated him in the first fight. Um, in the rematch that was actually mandated by the WBA, it wound up getting stopped on a, what was that? I think it was a, a clash of heads that led to, to, um, to cuts that wound up uh, resulting in the no contest in the third round, if I remember correctly. Um, but Solis uh, gave him hell. You know, he gave Shinsuke Yamanaka a hell of a fight as well. But um, even though Yamanaka won that fight pretty wide, I, I'd, I'd say that the action in that fight was actually a lot closer than uh, the scores would necessarily lead you to believe. Which isn't necessarily to say that Yamanaka didn't deserve to win a pretty, a relatively um, clear-cut decision, sure. But Solis was making him work every single round to get that decision. And he actually even dropped him once as well. Um, another name that may might not be as well known is uh, Karim Guerfi, um, fighter from France. A uh, guy that actually fought Alejandro Cobrito Hernandez shortly after Hernandez had fought Carl Frampton, a lot of people remember, um, actually Hernandez, I, why do I keep saying Hernandez? I think it was, uh, his name, name is Gonzalez, Alejandro Gonzalez, Roberto Gonzalez. Um, he dropped Carl Frampton twice, I think, uh, pretty infamously on uh, Frampton's um, debut in the U.S. And um, he had actually moved up to fight against Frampton, so he was normally a 118-pounder. He moved up to fight Frampton, 
dropped him twice, but he did lose a decision to Frampton. And then um, immediately after that, of course, they had him on another telecast where he fought Kareem Griffey, and Griffey actually managed to beat him by what was either a majority or a split decision. I don't have box rec open right now, so I can't tell you off the, I can't tell you specifically, but um, it was either a majority or a split decision. Very close decision between him and Griffey. So to me, um, Griffey, I think it, it, he looms as another guy that's really a kind of an unheralded uh, top contender, top tier fighter at the weight class. Um, even if he doesn't necessarily have the, the accolades um, outright to show it in terms of uh, world title belts and such. Um, beyond that, um, you know, uh, kind of a dark horse that I'd imagine uh, might be out there that, that I, I think probably would participate too is um, Daigo Higa, the recently deposed uh, WBC flyweight champion, or former WBC flyweight champion. Of course, he lost his belt on the scales. He weighed uh, over 114 pounds for a title fight that was supposed to be at 112. Um, and then subsequently lost by knockout to Christopher Rosales, um, Christopher Latigo Rosales, who's uh, probably better, best known for being um, the, the son of uh, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez's cousin. So um, he lost that title, and um, he actually got banned by the Japanese Boxing Commission um, indefinitely, um, pending, he, I guess, him being able to prove that he can make weight again, you know, whether it's 112 or even 115. I mean, considering... He definitely looked even drained in there against uh, Rosales, even after only making 114, and I think it was 114 and a half, as opposed to 112. So, I mean, if he was drained even just getting down to, to the to 114-ish, um, I'd imagine even fighting at 115 may be a bit, uh, a bit of a stretch for him. Um, so, I could very well see him jumping into the War Boxing Super Series, you know, considering the fact that um, most of these fights are probably going to be taking place um, outside of Japan, so where he's... Where he's uh, currently suspended anyway um you know if he was to fight some of these fights in the u.s or, or in europe or um wherever else they, they may happen to have these you know they were talking about the finals for the the recent cruiserweight for, and super middleweights um happening in saudi arabia although or, or, or get, i guess that um has kind of went down the drain since, considering the injuries of of a couple of the fighters in, in those main events and also, I guess, um, some issues with uh, Garcia wanting to fight Usyk in Russia. I haven't kept too too much close track of that, but supposedly that's that's the word on the street. Um, but I think Higa would be a really good addition as well. And even though he's coming off of a knockout loss to Rosales, um, I still think that he's a very dangerous fighter. You know, he's a young guy. He could very well rebound from that loss. Um, he's 22, or, or is he 23 now? He's either 22 or 23 by, 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 by now. But, um, you know, he's still a young guy that I think could very easily rebound from such a loss. He's a very dangerous fighter. All of his wins are still by knockout. Um, so, you know, at the very least, he's, a, he's one of these killer be killed type fighters where he's either going to knock you out or get knocked out himself. Um, but I think he'd be a really good addition to the tournament as well. And he actually might even be a bit of a dark horse in terms of uh, causing a couple of upsets um, by virtue of the fact that I imagine a lot of people would underrate him due to the fact that he's coming off of a loss as well as the fact that he'd be coming up um, a couple of weight classes, um, not unlike the way that uh, the aforementioned Inoue kind of did back when he jumped over 112 to fight uh, Omar Navaya as the number one at 115 at the time. But um, yeah, those are some names uh, that I think would be excellent additions to round out the Bantamweight tournament. Um, if I had my, if I had it my way, um, I do think that Inoue is going to defeat Jimmy McDonald, so I think um, he's a bit of a lock for, for that fourth spot. Um, I wouldn't mind them just putting the Ubali uh, por Chitapana winner or the, the, the Ubali por Chitapana fight in as a part of the tournament um, so, so that we have a new WBC champion crowned and then we have all four of the belts involved. And so there's no ifs, ands, or buts as to who's the man of the Bantamweight division afterwards. Um, so I'd like them to be involved. So that would put it up at uh, six. And then the last two rounding it out, I, I'd, fa I'd favor Payano and Warren over any of the other guys that I'd named. But um, failing their inclusion, I wouldn't mind seeing Guerfi in there. I wouldn't mind seeing Higa in there. Um, Solis would probably be my last, uh, my last choice in terms of all those guys because Solis has come up a little short recently. But at the same time, I actually wouldn't mind hit seeing him get another shot at it too. So from a competitive standpoint, I'm not necessarily sure if he's, if he's going to measure up to uh, some of the other guys on the list. But uh, from a standpoint of wanting to see him get paid, you know, the way that I think that he probably should have been before, um, I wouldn't mind seeing him in there at all. But, uh, and then, of course, Daigo Higa, as I kind of expounded on before. But I think that's going to do it for this one. I'll uh, talk more about it once uh, there's, there's more news at this division as well as the other ones. But that's going to do it for this one. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.